Nicolas Cage. I'm honored to be here. Well, thank uh, you. Interviewing one of my favorite actors of all time. Oh, thank you. My first question is, you have, you have these four guinea pigs, you have this hamster, ferret mix, and, and then you have this mole. Now, yeah. now Jerry Bruckheimer's your boy. You done, you've done seven films with him. Why did you choose the mole? You could have got any, any animal. What was it about the mole speckles that, that made you? Uh... I mean, I think guinea pigs are boring. <laughs> <laughs> They're too cute and cuddly and obnoxious that way. I, uh, I don't want a character that makes people think, oh, how sweet, and pet them. I want a character with a long tail that looks like, you know, it says, I dare you to pick me up. <laughs> I need a character with personality and, a, and an opinion and purpose. I need that guy. Yeah, with the pink nose. Yeah, with the pink nose. <laughs> <laughs> well, how, how was it, like, you, you changed your voice in, in, this, in this picture. Like, you, it was unrecognizable. What, what about uh, that character made you, like, just go with this kind of underground voice that you was? You know, the character looked like something that needed a weird voice. I mean, because he looks weird. And it was a voice I've been working on for a while. Um, that's the voice that I use when I'm stressed out or uh, I'm frustrated. So rather than resorting to profanity or um, yelling, I'll start talking in that ridiculous voice and I'll start laughing because it's so stupid that right. I'll it'll make light of any serious situation, and I can't take it too seriously. Right. When Jerry came to me with G-Force, I was at that point, because it was the last day of photography on National Treasure 2, and I was tired, and he said, would you, what, would you do this? And I, and I said, well, can I talk like that? And I went into the voice, and he said, yeah, you can. Right, right. So that's how it happened. Darling, you're behind schedule. You all right? First mission jitters, I guess. Do you want to abort? No, no, it's okay. I've been trained to do this. I'd follow you into a snarling pack of... Dobermans! <laughs> oh, wait. I already have. Now get your fuzzy hind end moving. Hold on, there's a civilian passing through the perimeter. What are you looking at? Move along, pal. Ooh. Don't worry, I just spotted my way in. Is, is it, I'm sure you don't spend as much time, in, on, or maybe you do, on the voice fluctuations in your live action characters. When it's an animated character, I know you also lent your voice to Astro Boy, but is it almost like you have to really focus on every fluctuation so that the audience could get the desired effect? Or? Yeah, actually, I, I think so. But more in the process itself of how many times I'll say the line. Like, I'll go off page and I'll think about it, and then, and then I'll just forget everything and start acting. And, and I'll try to find some spark to it, something that has a bit of electricity. I may say it seven or eight times. I may just start improvising, right, but then right. the director will find something that works. Right. Now, in G-Force, this is the first... 3D animation that I that I've seen uh, and the graphics was unbelievable. Like, how, how does it feel to be part of history history making with Jerry Bruckheimer once again? I mean, I, I like working with Jerry because he you know he knows how to make movies that entertain people and that's his priority. He genuinely cares about making people happy and uh, loves kids and uh, so I think that with with this. Um, you know, he, he looks for me to go into areas that'll bring a bit of a unique spin on it or right, some right. something just a bit bizarre to give it a, a different take, a different look. And between the two, it creates something. Well, I really thank you for your time. Cheers. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much.